now on Talking Solutions, I'd like to welcome back Kennedy Coven Richardson with Workforce Connections. Do That's I remember right. correctly? You do. That's exactly right. Well, it was great having you here before, and I understand that there is some kind of big event that we want to get the word out on. What's yes, going on? It is huge. It is the Nevada Day Super Hiring Event. We've had it two other times before. This makes our third opportunity to really get jobs out to the community, get people in face to face with employers because there are so many online jobs, you know, how you have to apply. Yeah, you hear that so all the time you these do, days. And no one has a paper application, but you never get to the employer, right? And it just goes into this cyberspace that doesn't exist because you never get a call back. But this is the opportunity to get a job and meet face to face. You're always better than your resume. So it's a great opportunity to get out there, get seen, get networked and get a job. Also, Kennedy, we should tell people who aren't aware what Workforce Connections is. That is a great point. We are at the Southern Nevada Workforce Investment Board. And what that means is that we have about $27 million a year where we give out money to different partners so they can do workforce development services. And what that means for the public is that you can go into many of our affiliate sites and get dollars for training. So you can get grants. So if you'd like to become a CNA or a chef or any of those fields, then we can pay for that training so that you can be more competitive in the job market. We are always hearing about people going to school or going to college or taking additional courses and how in debt they end up being because they want to further their skills. They want to learn something that really is marketable, but there's a cost involved. Exactly. But with Workforce Connections, you could actually get some training you can get training and get it paid for. The money comes from the Department of Labor, and this is an opportunity for the government to really give back to what you're already paying in, right? So when you're working, you're paying your taxes. So this is your tax dollars at work. A lot of people don't know about it. And that's why I appreciate coming on the show so that people can understand what opportunities are there for them. And if they want to get training, need to get training to upskill, become more competitive, this is a great opportunity to do so. Kennedy Coppin Richardson is with us today on Talking Solutions from Workforce Connections. Kennedy, you mentioned that you guys get like $27 million a year. So that money comes from the federal government yes. to help with all kinds of things, I'd imagine. And I know I first met you several months ago in relationship to Goodwill and their right. Career Connections people. Yes. So Goodwill would be one of the groups that would receive a lot of the money. Exactly. But who are the different groups? I mean, is it several different groups? Right. So this year, it's different. Maybe every year, different agencies get funding. But currently, it's Goodwill, Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, Hope for Prisoners, Foundation for Independent Tomorrow, Nevada Partners. I feel like I'm missing one agency, but a host of agencies in the Valley that allow us to really have our geographic footprint. So it's the north, south, east, and west of Las Vegas. So if you are looking to get services, you can find something in your part of town. In the back of my mind from our previous conversation. Why do I want to say help of Southern Nevada? That's it. That's why they pay you the big buck. <laughs> Both of my brain cells showed yeah, up for work did. today. Wow. <laughs> That's no, awesome. I thought I remembered that in our previous conversation. So basically, all these different groups who do wonderful work, yes, they get federal dollars to help them achieve correct workforce development dollars. So they, as you said, they all do really wonderful things in their array of services. But this is our opportunity to leverage those dollars against those other services, so they can really help people get out there, get a job, help them with childcare. For example, housing will help you with housing and a job. Goodwill can help you with assistive technology and a job, and it just allows them to do really more of what they do and do it better. And you guys are like the umbrella. You're the dollars with Workforce Connections that is coming and trickling down into all these different groups here in the area. Correct. Sounds like a great thing. How does somebody find out? I don't think I've asked this of you before. How does a person who says, I would love some training, I need some training to help me get that really good job that I've been wanting. Is it different parameters for each one of these groups? You need to go to the group directly and say, I hear you might have some federal money to help me get training. How do I qualify? That is a really great question. So there are three pots of funding. It's called adult, dislocated worker, and youth. So if you're a youth with at least one barrier between 18 and 20, 24, it's likely you'll get funding. Yes, you do need to go in and talk individually about that, but you probably will be eligible if you are 18 and 24 and have one barrier. If you are an adult, you're 18 and older. And we like to say, as long as if you're underemployed or unemployed, it's likely that you can get some help. Dislocated worker is defined as a person who has been laid off from a job, or they are a homemaker of a person who's been laid off from a job. And if you fit in one of those categories, then that's where the funding is really targeted towards, and particularly people 
people with barriers or any kind of assistance, you're guaranteed to get some help pretty much. Is it the sort of thing that we would also find out more information on during this big Nevada Day Super Hiring event? There will be a table that will explain all of our services. It is for people who are really looking for a job and we'll have information on the different agencies. So if you'd like to have an appointment, get with one of the agencies, we'll give you the information and you can go and meet with them privately. Great to know. This event is coming up Thursday, November 3rd, so just a few days away. It's at 10 a.m. at the Culinary Academy of Las Vegas, and the address that I'm seeing here is 710 West Lake Mead Boulevard. Correct. Who else going to be there? 30 employers will be there, which makes this a really, really huge event. Employers in the IT industry, in the manufacturing industry, hospitality, and the healthcare industry. And what's really important about that is that those are the jobs that are in demand. And so if you live in Southern Nevada, and you have skills that can transfer to one of these industries, then you're likely to get a job. So people like Stations, Chelton House, PLI Card, Vita Healthcare, they will all be there. Kennedy Cobbin Richardson is with us today on Talking Solutions from Workforce Connections, We're talking about this huge job fair event that's coming up just a few days from now on Thursday, November 3rd. Kennedy, what do people need to plan to bring in? I'm excited about the fact that they're going to see some employers, people who could actually give them a job right. that day mm-hmm. face to face. Right. At least move to the second step because of all the background checking and all that. It's hard to do on-site offers, but it does give you at least a second interview or the next step in that hiring process. But you need to come dress for success, really. So have your outfit on that's professional. You also need at least five resumes. You want to go on our site ahead of time, which is nvcareercensor.org. Again, that's nvcareercensor.org. And look at all of the employers and jobs that are available. You want to know which five jobs you want to compete for. You look at the minimum qualifications, make sure that you meet those minimum qualifications, and then choose to compete for those jobs when you get there. And then last but certainly not least, have a winning attitude, smile, and really be ready to meet someone. People really do decide whether or not they just want to be around you before they even get to your skills and qualifications. But are you someone that I can look at every day in the office? Those first impressions are so important. Exactly. Make a good impression on the person with that prospective employer, whether or not they're the one who will actually hire you. Mm -hmm. And you've got an advocate on your side, somebody who says, I met this one person. We really need to get them on staff. They are so great. Mm -hmm. Here's their resume. That's exactly right. This is a chance for us to make a difference. The Nevada Day Super Hiring event is coming up Thursday, which is November 3rd. Starts at 10 Mm a.m., but is it an all-day type event? Everyone needs to arrive by 10, and then it just peters out. So once the crowd, you know, dissipates, then it's over. And so we really want people to arrive immediately. Well, I would. Talking about that first impression being so important, being on time would be a big notch in your belt. Exactly. I'll never forget two years ago, I think, when someone arrived at 630 what? <laughs> Eight yes. and a half hours into it? Well, you know, just in case no, there's... No, 6.30 in the morning. Oh, I thought you meant 6.30 <laughs> at night. No. I'm like, wow. Like he was late. No, but he was that early. We didn't know what he wanted. And so uh, news cameras were there. And so he got a lot of press, a lot of people on Twitter, you know, hoping he got a job. And it just showed his commitment and his willingness to do above and beyond what was called for. You don't need to come at 6.30, but I would say arrive early. <laughs> I've got the wrong. 6 30. Okay, I was thinking late, it's dark out, people are gone. Either one, the 6 30 is not exactly when you need to be there. You want to be there by 10 a.m. for the big Workforce Connections Nevada Day Super Hiring event. And it is Thursday, November 3rd. Kennedy will have the information on your website for people. What are they going to do at this website at nvcareercenter.org? They are going to see all of the jobs that are available. So there'll be no guessing about who's there and what they're looking for. For. And so what you need to do to, in order to be prepared is to know that ahead of time, write the name of the employer and the job that you're looking for on top of your resume. It will go in the resume box. The employers will look at it and hopefully select you for an interview. 
I'm thinking about that guy who showed up a couple years ago at 6.30 a.m. Do you happen to know, did he get a job? He did. I would figure he should deserve a job. He did. Okay, I had to get that out of the back of my mind. So you said 30 different employers and the concentration of the jobs that are being offered up that day. Those are the jobs that are in high demand. Yes. 80% will be in IT, healthcare, manufacturing, or hospitality. And so that's, you know, pretty much what makes up Southern Nevada workforce. And we really want to make sure that people are prepared for that. If you're not prepared for that and you're looking to get into something, I would strongly consider those four sectors just because it's what you need to do. And if you haven't been in a certain skill, like, for example, many people need customer service, right? Healthcare needs customer service. Hospitality needs customer service. And so even if you haven't been in one of those fields, maybe in another field, the things that you do have can transfer to those jobs. So it doesn't count you out just because you haven't been in a healthcare field before because they need a lot of the same skills other sectors do too. Well, and the main thing, I guess, would be to go to the website nvcareercenter.org and see what jobs are being offered. And as you mentioned, might be in the IT industry, but your customer service experience Mm -hmm. may match you up with one of those openings where the skill set corresponds. Exactly. That's exactly right. This would be a great time to look into what jobs are going to be offered, get your resumes in order. You know what else we've got coming up very soon? We're coming up on Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. I know that in talking with Goodwill's career connections in the past, Mm -hmm. they've got a big leaning toward helping veterans. Mm -hmm. Is there anything along that line with this event? Certainly. Veterans are really considered the model job seeker just because people believe that they have the work ethic, the skills necessary to do many jobs. There's also tax credits for employers for hiring veterans. And veterans are priority of service. So for example, if a veteran comes to the job fair, they will get seen first just because they're a veteran. And that really happens with all of our agencies, that veterans have a high priority in all that we do. And for example, in IT, most IT employers are really looking at veterans because they believe that some of the skills they had in the military really can transfer. I mean, our job and what Goodwill does is help the veterans and actually prepare to communicate those skills and make that crosswalk to the next job. Because a lot of times the employer on the other side of the table doesn't understand the language of the military and the job titles don't really match up with civilian jobs. And so a place like Goodwill will help them get there and say the things that the employer needs to hear in order to say, okay, you can do this job because of your past experience in the military. And so it's a great opportunity really for veterans as well. It sounds like you've got opportunities for so many different types of people. Kennedy Cobb and Richardson in with us from Workforce Connections talking about that big job fair that is Thursday starting at 10 a.m. That 10 a.m. is going to be important. People need to be there by 10 a.m. and ready. And it's going to be happening at the Culinary Academy of Las Vegas. That's at 710 West Lake Mead Boulevard. I'm going to make sure the links and all the information are also on our Talking Solutions Facebook page, along with the podcast of our discussion today. Because, Kennedy... Maybe someone who's hearing us right now knows somebody who would be a perfect fit who could use a job like this. But since they're not listening at the moment, we can get them to hear the podcast, get the information, get them out there so they can get hired into a great new job. I so appreciate you doing that with us. We appreciate you. And looking at it too, I know in our previous discussion a while back, we talked about the fact that Nevada is finally rising from that bottom that hit us so hard with the recession and everything that happened around 2008 and the years beyond. Do you see from your perspective with Workforce Connections that we're coming through that, that we're rising and we're starting to grow and build again. I do. It's actually really an exciting time because we're really getting new industries in. When the bottom did hit, it hit because of tourism and hospitality and construction, right? So new houses weren't being built, people were not traveling, and they weren't coming in. However, now it's really exciting some of the meetings that I'm a part of that have to do with growing our diversified labor economy. And so it's not just hospitality anymore, but the fact that manufacturing is huge. We have so much space in Nevada for manufacturing plants to build that we are really an ideal place to come to. When we look at IT, for example, it's no longer an IT employer because every employer has IT as a part of what they do. And that's growing by leaps and bounds. And so our job is to help people get into those fields. Our training is largely for entry level, meaning that we want you to get into the field and then grow from there. And one thing that we do see is if you really want a job now, it's likely you can get one. Whereas before it was so competitive for even the 
even the lower wage jobs. But now most people are working at one point where we're less than 5% and that's considered structural employment, which means that people who actually want to work are working. So the people that 5% is maybe a housewife, you know, it's a stay at home mom or retired or just a person who, you know, just doesn't choose to be in the workforce. It used to be just an employer's market, but now I think it's tilting towards the job seeker, meaning that he or she now can be a little bit more choosy about the things that they do, have employers compete for their talent if they have great talent and really decide on how they want to move forward instead of being as desperate. That's the one thing I saw three or four years ago. It was a really desperate workforce, and that has definitely changed. That is wonderful to hear. I know some of the stories that I've heard coming off the news in the recent past, they say that people are quitting their jobs in higher numbers. And one of the reasons Mm -hmm. why that's okay is because the job market is promising enough that they are confident they will find another job. That's I agree. big. That's big for us coming from where we came from. And then if you look back further, it used to be if you just came in the airport in five minutes, you're here, you got a job. That used to be what this was about and why so many people were coming in such large numbers. And so to have that change so drastically from almost everyone getting a job to almost no one having a job, that was really a hard stretch for us. And so I'm proud of Nevada. I believe that we you know, do have the inner strength to bounce back, move forward in greater ways than even before so that we're not as vulnerable as what happened in the Great Recession. So I'm really proud of where we've come from and even where we're going. We are back into a period of growth. You're seeing our population grow. You're seeing the construction of so many new houses, a lot of the growth within our community that tells us that things are looking up. It is. And we're cutting edge. So between Faraday, Tesla, and Hyperloop, transportation hasn't changed in the last 80 years. And so not only are we just diversifying from that standpoint, but we are cutting edge and leading. So the entire world will be looking at us based on some of the industry that's come here. When we talk about cybersecurity, we're leading. And when we talk about drones, it's exciting, actually. It's very exciting. Technology has changed all of our worlds and our lives. I call them seismic shifts Mm -hmm. in jobs that are available in areas where, as you say, the Mm -hmm. in-demand jobs are existing. And this could be the time when you get started Mm -hmm. on a new course of learning, training for something new, upping your training level so Mm -hmm. that you are better at doing whatever it is you do. The Nevada Day Super Hiring Event with Workforce Connections coming up next Thursday, which is November 3rd, starts at 10 a.m. Kennedy Coppin Richardson is with us today on Talking Solutions with Workforce Connections. And you guys are the funnel of these federal dollars that are coming back to our state to provide training and job opportunities Mm -hmm. And the numbers that you mentioned a little bit earlier were something like $27 million a year Mm -hmm. that then gets distributed to a whole number of different organizations here in town that help prepare people for jobs, help them maybe with their resumes, getting everything ready so that Mm -hmm. they are set to go with that new job. Absolutely. And you have this event on Thursday. I would imagine you're going to have a pretty good turnout of people. I would hope so because the employers will be there. So it'd be a shame if the job seekers weren't. But yes, the employers will be ready and willing to talk and to offer. 30 different employers on site. Dress for the job that you're looking for. Have the resumes. Be there on time. Starts at 10 a.m. We'll have all the information, links, and everything on the Talking Solutions Facebook page, along with a podcast of our discussion today. Kennedy, am I missing anything? In that last, just a winning attitude. I can't say that enough. Just make sure because it's going to be a lot of people probably, and you need to be patient and still be winning. The employers in there will be seeing a lot of people. They could be tired as well. So they would love a person to sit in front of them that is, no matter how long you've been waiting, is smiling and really ready to sell themselves. So a winning attitude has to be a part of that. That new opportunity. Kennedy Cobb and Richardson, thank you so much for joining us today on Talking Solutions. Thank you.